going to be discussing the economics calendar. Now, in class tonight, I'm going to use the term security when referring to any tradable financial instrument. This includes stocks, bonds, commodities, futures, indices, mutual funds, options, cryptocurrency, and CFDs alike, and of course, Forex. While I may simply imply an investment product, like I may say shares, or I may say the euro, or I may say Apple, I'm talking in generalities over all of the publicly traded financial instruments. Similarly, I intermix the terms investing and trading, only because it gets very boring saying investing, investing, investing. So I mix up investing and trading. Now, typically, an investor takes a long-term position while a trader takes a much shorter-term position. But in either case, the basic concepts and techniques presented in this class are equally adept. So let's begin talking about how to trade the economic news. Now, trading the news can be very profitable if you can correctly guess which way price is going to move. Price can move as many as 30 or 40 pips very quickly on big news releases, but knowing which way it's going to move is very much a gamble. So most traders do not trade the news as it is just too risky or you often get stopped out as price moves one way and then the other. Most traders have experienced this whipsaw effect when price goes up and then goes down very quickly and then down and then up. So it seems that no matter what way you trade, you can always get stopped out. But there are known methods of trading the economic news or the economics calendar. Now, when an economics release comes out, Markets can react violently as traders enter and exit positions based on new information. Now, some news releases are more important like, uh, than others. Like on the first Friday of each month, we get the non-farms payroll release. That is the most important release of the month. We also get CPI, which are inflation figures. Now, almost every country around the world releases all the same data. They call it slightly different, like in the U.S., the jobs report is called the non-farms payroll report. In the UK, it's called the claiming count. In Australia, it's just called the employment report. Okay, But every country is putting together these statistical information to be released to the public. Now, it wasn't developed, and the countries don't release it for the Forex markets. But the economics calendar that we look at in Forex trading has been developed for only the releases that affect the financial markets. Now, there's a good reason for this. Central bank announcements like rate hikes directly affect the money supply, which has a major bearing on the economy, while CPI, which is inflation, or unemployment numbers can influence central bank policies. Like today, the US weekly unemployment number was the lowest number it's been in 49 years. But did the dollar rally? Nope. So you have to understand how these pieces of data affect the tradable assets or the assets you're looking at. These days, sophisticated algorithms are able to process news releases in the blink of an eye and move the markets accordingly. Financial markets, therefore, adjust quickly to the new information. Even so, the biggest news releases create opportunities in the market because they cause long-lasting price movements and momentarily distort the efficiencies of the market. Now, all of this data is compiled together for us in what's called an economics calendar. Now, the economics calendar is a fundamental analysis tool for traders to position themselves to take advantage of future currency movements or other assets. The economics counter, which is published daily, is the main trading tool for traders that use fundamental analysis as signals for entering and exiting trades. Economic and political news can change the direction of a currency pair in seconds, and the fundamentals that are true in one second can be rendered absolutely meaningless a few seconds later. The economics counter enables traders to track economic indicators and political events that impact the 
currency movements. Now, whether you're going to trade from the economics counter or not, you need to le learn how to read it and use it because these events do shake up the markets. Now, sometimes they make very little effect. Sometimes they cause a lot of volatility only for a few minutes. But the fact is you did all of your analysis. You looked at everything possible and you decided oil was going to go up today. And you decide you were going to trade oil. Now, the fact is you bought oil at $52 a barrel. And oil closed out the end of the day at $56 a barrel. You were completely right in your analysis. And you would set up the buy at 52. You had already put up your limit order at 56. You were getting out of the market at 56. You would have made $4 a barrel. You would have made a lot of money today. But you didn't look at the economics calendar and you ignored the fact that the U.S. was releasing its weekly EIA inventory report or it's Friday and the, the number of oil wells or rigs were being released. Well, those numbers might not have affected the movement of the asset in the long term or the rest of the day. But because the traders were preparing ahead of the time for that release, Right before the release came out, they were pushing price down because they thought the release was going to show there was a lot of inventory in the U.S., oil inventory. So they were selling, selling, selling. So what happened is you bought at $52 because you were short. It was going to go up. And you put your stop loss at $49. And because all of these people were preparing for this negative report, they pushed the asset below $49 right before the report came out. But the report was exactly at market expectation. So that $52 held and the market went back to $52. And later that day moved up to 56. You would have been loaded. You would have been rolling in the money. But the fact is you didn't put your stop loss in the right place because you didn't look at the economics count to see that a report was being released that could affect the momentary volatility of the marketplace. Just a momentary short-term volatility because the report came out as expected. But because a lot of traders were selling, anticipating a negative report, you got stopped out. So a perfectly good decision became a losing trade for you. Now, believe it or not, there are a large number of amateur traders who ignore news events and economic releases completely. They concentrate solely on technical indicators and chart patterns. Then they wonder why the market spiked violently against them in the space of a few minutes. However, other traders acknowledge the importance of news releases, but they seem see them as unpredictable and too risky to trade. Now, you don't have to trade from them, but you have to be aware that they're coming out and could affect the asset you're looking at. I have always been taught to study the fundamentals of news releases offers good trading opportunities so long as you are selective and disciplined in your approach. In fact, some of my best trading wins have come from reacting quickly to big economic releases such as U.S. non-farms payroll report, the Fed rate hikes, and I have previously spoken of the importance of buying into the rumor and selling the fact. In effect, anticipating news releases before it comes out. So let's go over because before you can start using these as a fundamental tool, you have to understand how to read them and what they are. So let's go over to the investing.com economics calendar. And I have it popped up on your screen. And this is a standard economics calendar. Now, the data that's fed into the economics account comes from feeds, from the sources. So you're going to find that all the data is the same. Okay? And all the calendars are the same. All that's left is for the website designer and the creative staff to find a way to customize the calendar to fit their site. You can't change the day of the release. You can't change the asset being affected. You can't change the importance of the level because it's standardized. Can't change the name of the event. You can't change the data that's being released. Now you can change the colors. You can change the layout. But all of this data is coming by feeds. And these feeds 
have this data in there. So you have to tell your computer. So on investing.com, for instance, we use bullheads to explain or to, to notice the importance of the, the event. Okay. Now, all economic events are rated in three levels. They're first tier, second tier, and third tier data. Top tier data is the three level. That's data that's important enough to affect the markets immediately. Level two data are events at, that or reports that could have a small effect on the markets. And level one data don't really have an, any effect on the markets at all. But keep in mind that the statistical data that's released by these agencies and the government wasn't developed for Forex traders. It's developed for all the government, all the statistical information that an economy and a government needs to have. And these reports are huge. But they're what we call, there's headline events. These headline events are the major report, like with the jobs report or the non-farm payroll report. It's the amount of jobs created and the unemployment rate. After that, there is pages and pages and pages and pages of data that you can get lost in. You know, on what sector, what age bracket was being higher, what race was being higher, and every city and every state and every job sector. Because if you're in Mississippi and you're a health, you know, your healthcare human resources, only thing you're concerned with is healthcare. What's the, what's the hiring been in Mississippi? What the age bracket's been? what the race has been, what the education, because this is what concerns you. It has no effect on the financial markets. But this is the data that your government puts out because it, all the government agencies and all the individual agencies need this, okay? And it comes from the government statistical offices. Now, the economics calendar sorts out all the data that affects the financial markets. Now, the first thing we get on a calendar is the time. And this is crucially important. Every calendar, whether you're looking at the calendar on investing.com, you're looking at the calendar on your brokerage site, you're looking at the calendar on Forex Factory or Forex Street, they're all getting the same data from the same places. But they've got it laid out different. You want to go first place to set the time zone to your local time zone. Because you don't want to miscalculate when this data is coming out because you have the wrong time zone on there. After that, we also have filters. Okay, filters are very important because there is a huge amount of data being released by every country around the globe. Okay. Well, if you're trading on CFDs on a broker, uh, you know, on UBCFX, but, you know, we're trading the major currencies. You, you know, what's coming out of Czechoslovakia, what's coming out of Cyprus, what's coming out of Malta, doesn't affect anything we're trading. Tunisia data. So we don't want to see those countries' data. Okay. So we leave the major countries that affect our trading. Of course, we have China, all the Eurozone, you know, Germany, because it's the biggest country in the Eurozone, but we don't need the small countries whose economic data doesn't affect the value of the euro, or if you're trading indices, the stock market. But if you're trading the CAC, which is a French stock exchange, then you want to make sure you have French data coming up as well as Eurozone data. So pick you pick the countries that you want to have the data from. From here, we go down to categories. And for the Forex market, CFD trading, we need to see all of these categories, but you don't really need to see bonds. But if you want to see bonds, just leave all the boxes off. After that, we go to the importance level. Now, the fact is, if we don't filter all this down, there's so much in a calendar that we'll get lost. We'll never get anywhere. So if I leave on the one level, two level, and three level data, just for the major countries, this is how long today's data, today's release would have been. Way, way too much. And most of this data isn't going to affect anything we do or we're going to do. So we know we can filter out level one data. Okay. Again, if you're trading a particular asset 
or you want to see something of importance because maybe you're looking at only healthcare stocks, okay, to trade in CFDs. So maybe you want to leave on level one data because it could affect the value of that stock you're looking at. Okay, so that's your choice depending on what you, you know, that particular search you're doing. But overall, we don't want to see level one data because we need to get it off our calendar because it's just too much stuff. So if we go down to level one and two, that's two bullheads and three bullheads in this calendar. You know, like if you're using Forex Street, they use red, yellow, and blue, I think it is. Okay. They use three colors. Some of them use asterisk points. Some use just a number one, two, and three. This is sometimes called also the importance level, the impact level, the volatility level. In fact, investing.com can't even seem to get it right. They have up here IMP for the impact level. And if we come down here below, they call it volatility. High volatility, moderate volatility, and low volatility. But it's still the same one, two, and three. And because these are the few things that the creative designer can, can change. They can call it what they want to call but it's still overall we just call it tier one tier two and tier three data then we go to the name of the event and i explain the jobs report in the u.s is the non-farms payroll report the jobs report in england is the claim account the jobs report in australia is, the, is it just a jobs report okay eventually you'll get them down pat because you know what all of these reports are released month after month after month by every country and they call you know you'll see what they call them but if you're not sure, every calendar will have a way to get some information. On investing.com, we just click on the line of the event. Some will give you a little information box. Some will give you a, a click-through box. But here, we click on it. It opens up and it tells us, this is the Australian price, house price index, which measures the change in the selling price of the homes. Invest Investing.com also gives us some range of charts down below to see some historical data. We'll also see the source of who's actually releasing this. Okay. Now, once you, you should do it once to go over and see the information and see a whole report. After you look at it one time, you'll never go back and look at a report again. They're just too big, too long, too boring. It's all statistical data. But you can go see who is being released. You see the country is releasing it. The currency being affected and the importance level. Okay. So once we know what it is, we then go over to the right hand side. First, all the way to the right, we see previous. Previous is what the number was last time this report was released. Okay. Then we go over to the most important number and that's forecast. Forecast is what the market is expecting this report at. So I'm going to come down here, and we're going to look at Friday's data. Okay. Only thing is, these reports haven't been released. So the only column we see here filled in here is Friday's forecast. So we're going to use for class tonight. Friday, we have a major report in the U.S., and that's retail sales. So we're expecting retail sales. Last month, retail sales were at 0.8%. We're expecting retail sales at 0.1%. And we're waiting for something to happen. So what are retail sales? We're going to click on it. Retail sales measures the change in the, vo the total value of sales at the retail level. It is the foremost indicator of consumer spending. In other words, if retail sales are up, that tells us consumers are spending, consumers are happy. That means they're happy. The jobs market's good because guess what? They're secure in their job. When they feel secure in their job, they spend money. When retail sales go up, that means manufacturing's going up and imports are going up. So that means manufacturers doing good. That means manufacturers do well, so they're gonna be hiring. So it's the overall economic cycle. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as a positive or bullish sign, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as a bearish sign. 
Now, the fact is, when we look at this, we see at 13.30 on Friday, the U.S. dollar will be affected at major report retail sales month over month for the month of November. Last month, it was at 0.8%. We're expecting it at 0.1%. That's the climb in the overall value of total retail sales. Now, for November and December, we expect to see it climb because we're going into holiday season. Okay. Now, right above it, we also see core retail sales. Okay. Now, core retail sales, or whatever you see core, you'll see core inflation, you'll see core manufacturing. Core takes out <clears throat> the major purchases from retail sales. It gets out automobiles. It takes out big home appliances because these are one-time buys. They're not really overall. They're part of retail sales. But they, they can have one-time effects on the market or they can misdue the market. So core retail sales exclude major things like automobiles, okay? Because automobiles, when you're spending $50,000 on a car and car sales were up, say, the month of November, could throw everything out of whack because it could mean overall consumers weren't spending, but corporations were buying up cars because the, the car dealers were offering good deals or the manufacturers or one of the big rental agencies bought, uh, you know, a whole fleet of cars. Well, that whole fleet of cars at $10 million can throw retail sales totally out of fact. So we use core and non-core. So without core shows us everything that was resold to retail level. Core takes out primarily automobile sales, airplane sales, yacht sales. Okay, anything that could be considered retail but isn't a normal, you know, it's a very big ticket item. So we have these two pieces of data being released. Now, the forecast is what the markets are expecting. The value of the assets have been adjusted to that market expectation. Now, the biggest difference you're gonna see from one economics calendar to the next is this one section forecast because the government agencies don't release forecasts they only release data so these forecasts come from big poll services like thomson reuters or platts and sometimes you'll see bloomberg offers some cnn offer you'll be reading an article where it says bloomberg survey of expect this you know in this report well different websites, different calendars at different websites are pulling that data from different sources for that one line. So they almost all are exactly the same, but when you see the variable, it's only, and when they do vary, it's by a very, very small amount, but it's the one place that you might see a variable. Now, once I just want to get my markers up here. Once the data has been released, okay, then you see something like we're looking here. When you see red under the actual, it means the data report or the report was less than expected. It was not a favorable report. It was lower than the expectations. When you see green, it means it was better than the expectations. Then on the right-hand side, where we have previous, when you see a red or a green, means that there was an adjustment to the prior month's report. Because this data is all flowing in, flowing in, flowing in, flowing in. And when the you know offices are calculating everything, you know some of the data might not have all flowed in on time. Or by the time they did all the statistics, they had to make an adjustment to the report. If an adjustment is made, you'll see it in the, for, in the previous, under revised and when you ever you see green or red in the previous means that there has been a revision which was released when this report came out now it's important 
to take it into account. Okay. The reason being is, let's take a look at today's jobless claims. Okay. We had a very good report. They fell down to two, they came in at 206. We were expecting 226. So this report was actually 20,000 claims lower than we expected, which is good with, with unemployment claims. But we also had a revision to the prior month and they were revised from 231 to 233. They were revised upward. So that's a 2000 job increase in claims. So technically we had a 20,000 better report, but technically we only had an 18,000 better report because we had a revision to the prior month. So sometimes the revisions are so large that they can take a positive report on some side and turn it to a negative, especially when you're talking about U.S. reports over major holidays. Like you always know the reports that are released in January will have huge revisions in December because so many people are off over the Christmas holidays that the data doesn't get in till late. So sometimes it can be a big revision like two or three years ago the jobs report, the non farms payroll report, missed by like 40,000 or 50,000 jobs. They totally shocked to the markets because the market, the jobs market was doing extremely well. So the dollar fell, gold rose, everybody, the stock market freaked out. The headlines were all haywire. But guess what? The next month, we got a huge surge in hiring. So the report was much better than expected, plus the revision jumped up 50,000 jobs from the, you know as a revision to the previous month. So that negative report the previous month technically was really a good report, but because all the data hadn't been received. Okay. So keep that in mind. But this is how the data is fed into your reports. Okay, so let me take you back over to the PowerPoint. And let's talk about, now there's a whole bunch of different data and what's important. We have inflation, we have interest rates, we have a country's current account and balance of payments, we have government debt, we have terms of trade. All of these are important to your economy and they're like the report card of your country or the country's economy. And they're not that much different than that report card. Now I'm gonna tell you a quick story about your kids and their report cards. You sit down to Sunday dinner with your two your kids and you say to your son, hey kiddo, Wednesday's report card day. He says, yep, I know. Well, you as a concerned parent say, well kiddo, last semester you brought us home four C's and four C pluses. Son says, yep. Now your son's a pretty good kid. He's an honest kid, he's, you know, he causes you no troubles, he does all right in school, doesn't, you know, has no behavioral issues and you trust your kid. So you say, well, kiddo, how do you think you did this semester? He says, well, I think I did a little bit better than last semester. So I think I'm gonna bring you home all C pluses. You say, okay. Now you being a good parent, you give him the lecture on, you know, if you wanna get into college, you gotta do better than that. You have a little bit less time on face, Facebook, a little bit more time on the books, a little bit less time playing soccer in the back end, a little bit more time studying because those grades have to get better if you're gonna get a scholarship in the college or get accepted in the college you want to go. But you're a good parent, you did the lecture. Now, this isn't a sign, you didn't go back to the school and talk to the principals, you didn't see if the grades were, how the other students were doing. This is just a general look. And the economics count does the same thing. It's not analyzing the economy. It's not looking at what Donald Trump is doing or what the North Koreans are doing. It's giving you data, straight up statistical data. And you can then do your analysis of that data because the data hasn't been shifted in any which way. So that makes it a very good tool. Now, you do your thing. Wednesday comes, the kid comes in the front door, hands you the envelope with the report card, goes right out the back door to play soccer. You open up the envelope and he brought you home all B's. 
You're shocked. You're ecstatic. You're happy. You're a proud parent. Why? Well, you were a proud parent before. You were a proud parent of C pluses. <coughs> Excuse me. And you're still a proud parent. He's a good kid. But the fact is, he did better than your expectation. You were expecting all C pluses. You got all Bs. So it was better. If he would have brought you home all Cs and you were expecting C pluses, you would have been disappointed. Now, your reactions to media, you open up the back door, holler outside, say, hey, kid, you know, give me an hour. We're going to go to the mall. We go to Sporting Goods Store. You, we'll, you know, we'll go to McDonald's for dinner. You can buy that soccer ball you want because, you know, we're, I'm a happy camper. Right. And this is how the markets react. But five minutes later, that soccer ball comes through the picture window, shatters the glass, glass is all over the living room, and guess what? You're pissed off because you've told him a hundred times not to play outside and not side of the house. You holler outside to get his butt inside to clean up the glass, tell him you're not going out to McDonald's, you're not going to the mall because now you got to call the handyman and pay for a new piece of glass. This is what happens in the markets. One minute, the markets can be very sure about a piece of data. And next minute, when they've had time to analyze, it's not so good. Or another report can come out on a different, you know, sometimes you have day after day. I mean, one day you can have a zillion different re economic reports come out. So a half hour later, you get a different report on inflation. Retail sales were great. Inflation comes out a little bit lower and it's disappointing because they're not related to one another necessarily. They're from different departments. They just happen to be released one after another. So. Market reaction can be harsh at the moment. So what you have to do is you have to build what we call market neutral, market negative, and market positive. Market neutral is the price around that release, whether it's a little bit better, a little bit less, that won't have a tradable market effect. Then you have to look at what that data would be released as that would give you a positive movement of that asset and if that data is less than this expectation how far that how far does that data have to miss to make it a negative report to get enough reaction so when we were talking about unemployment for the u.s and we saw that it came it was reported 226 and it came in at 206 is that a significant enough positive event to cause a market reaction, okay? And in that case, it should have been a positive market reaction because then we got to figure out what assets will be affected. Will that unemployment report affect the Dow Jones or the S&P? Will it affect Apple stock or will it affect the dollar? Or will it affect gold or oil? So we have to know what assets could be affected and where it could be affected. Okay. Now remember, we can have consolidation and news jerk reactions from assets. We can have all types, but trading the news can be very profitable if you can correctly guess which way the market is going to move. So if you build the, next, the matrix and determine market neutral, market positive, market negative, you can start out making some sense of the economic event. Because the nice thing about the economics calendar is all this data is already there. And a week before the event, you'll see the forecast. You'll see the event. You can sit down at your leisure and look at those events, look at the forecast and the expectation, read about and learn about what that data is, how it can affect the markets. You can open up and see the statistical charts of what it is, and you can decide what you would want to do. Now, what I do is I build a matrix. I start out with the name of the event, the day and the time, the assets that I think will be affected by that event. How volatile will be? What are the sub reports? In other words, with retail sales, we saw we had retail sales and core retail sales. Then we, I build in my forecast and my previous, which I get directly off the counter. And then I build up what we call market neutral, market positive and negative. And I can build those ahead of time. And I write, okay, if this jobs report is under, we're expecting 226. If it comes in below 200, that's going to a very positive report. It comes in at two. 30, 
that's a miss, but it's still market neutral. So I build my market neutral territory and I push it out. Now, the fact is, we also have to have what we call bumps. Bumps are a simple way of moving it a little bit from other pieces of data. So another we saw with the non uh, with the unemployment data that we had a previous revision that was revised down. So that's not enough to really mess up a report, but it's enough to bump that report. It's a minus bump. Okay. So if the report had come out in positive territory, but just an edge over a positive territory, a previous bump with a minus bump would have pulled it back into positive territory, where if it was in market neutral, say we had it at the edge of market neutral, we had said up to 225 would have been up to 205 would have been market neutral. Okay. But we also had a big revision upward from the previous month. So a positive revision. We could have said that pushed us way into market positive territory. So we build our matrix. Now that's for short term trading. We're here tonight because most of us are going to be CFD traders, which are take place and you know open and close within one day. You know, there's other ways if you're going to trade long term. But to trade the news on a short-term basis, a trader must have a clear criterion of what kind of news will justify a trade. Many news traders see at least a 50% surprise in the data to consider the news release tradable. And there are many different steps and processes which one can have. I've got a strategy that I've done in a presentation that I'll share with you now. Oh, by the way, I also did mention, if you look on your screen, you can see under handouts, I put together this fundamental analysis handout for you. Okay, This will go over and explain what we've talked about tonight. Also go over the different types of events and how they affect. And you need to download that now. It's not available at other, any other time. And it's not available in the recorded version. If you don't download it now, you will not have access to it. So please click the download button, download it now, and then move it to wherever you want to move it. But this will explain in greater detail everything we've been talking about tonight. So let me share this presentation on a strategy for trading the economic news events so you can see how to incorporate them into your trading.
So that's just one way that you can trade using price action on your charts of an economic event. You know, knowing when the event is and looking at what is happening just on price action without analyzing the actual event. But there's many different trading strategies that can be applied. But whether you're going to use and trade the news or whether you're just going to use it in to, to be aware of what's happening that affects your other trading, you need to learn these strategies in detail and you need to use practice and observation, validation and verification. But building a trading matrix isn't very difficult. Figure out market neutral, market positive, market negative. And you have it's one of the few times that you actually know that something is going to happen at the market at a specific time. And so you can prepare way ahead of time and set up your trades. You can set up, you know, on, on our platform, you can set what's called an OCO. One cancels the other. So you can tell the platform that if the asset, you know, rallies up to this point, buy it for me. If the asset falls down at, to this point, sell it for me. And whichever happens first, the system will automatically execute that trade and throw the other trade in the trash. So, there are many ways that you can use the platform, but remember, always set your stop loss, always calculate risk. Know that that extra volatility, okay, can cause a lot of whipsaw effects. Always be aware that volatility that will be created no matter what you're trading, but you can trade volatility and make profit from volatility by being smart, okay? Learning how to place orders properly because an OCO order, okay, is a great way to place you can let it, you know, when it rallies up, place it, and it'll automatically buy you up when it rallies down or limit orders. You can tell the computer, if the asset falls to this price, buy it for me. If the asset goes to that price, sell it for me because that volatility might push gold up temporarily up to $1,300 and you can sell it at $1,300 because you know it's going to come back down to that $1,250 level where it's been trading. There's all kinds of opportunities. You can set your stop losses, your take profit points all ahead of time and let the computer take advantage of limit orders, understand orders, make sure you enter stop losses and make sure you understand how the event might affect the marketplace. But again, this is one of the few times that you'll actually be able to know something is going to happen and when it's going to happen. Now, then just figure out which direction it's going to go is not so complicated. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for supporting investing.com. And if you want to learn more, go to www.ubcfx.com. Take advantage of their education platform and they'll explain all of the fundamental analysis and how to use it in your trading. And don't forget to download the handout I gave you because that guy could be very, very helpful to you. And thank you very much for joining us tonight and have a wonderful trading week and a great holiday season. Bye now.